Well, here we go, Albie. This is a totally new everything. A totally new everything. So this is a, a different soundboard. The other soundboard that I was using on the 10-year-old computer is, is, is the company's out of business. I know. So, so I can't get it anymore. Because you told me to get soundboard, and I couldn't get it on right? my computer. Right. So now I have a... So what this is... A miraculous thing happened. A Christmas miracle happened. Mm-hmm. I dusted off this other uh, MacBook Air from 2013 that we used to use at Herald Radio that was only the phone screener. And the screen had been broken for a few years now, so no no screen at all. So I called an IT guy who was clueless, and I asked George if he knew any cheats, and I tried every, like, reset that George knew, but I couldn't see what was happening because there's no monitor. Mm -hmm. Then I drove to a Best Buy, drove back here uh, to get a cord to park. To, this is important to me. This is a big part of my life. That's why I'm telling you guys. Drove back here to connect this machine up to a... A TV so I could at least see what's going on in the machine to see if I can fix some settings. I opened this laptop, this laptop that could not see, for it had no screen whatsoever, mm -hmm. and bang, the screen was on. Stuck. It was stuck in like 2017 or 2018. <laughs> it was interesting. It asked me to, if I wanted to open up my tabs. I'm like, yeah, open them right up. I knew there were signs of life because when I turned Were there a the, bunch of like news stories open yes. from an age ago that yep. you didn't remember what they were? Well, yeah, but we barely used that computer. But yes, but it, it, that was, but so, and there was, um, well, it was signs of life because my other computer was picking up that another computer was alive. So it was giving me a warning. Hey, somebody else is looking at your, your text. Hmm. So that's incredible. This thing, and this computer has hardly any memory is taken. There are 97.52 gigs free on this computer. I don't know. So if what it, you're telling people is you're not going to want to stop the show at the end well, when we're the, rolling in the middle. Well, of the then, so now show. I don't have to worry. I haven't even restarted this. I don't have to worry about, usually in the other computer, there's like a, a, a gig, if that, mm -hmm. uh, available. So I, I'm, I can't do anything. to. It, it's so painful. The, I am so, I, I have a, this, the action in this thing, this thing flies. It's like a pristine computer, if it were 2013. But still, it's awesome, and it's changed my life, but I, that means I do have to download everything new and put it on here. I can't believe it. I can't believe I almost, Alice, like, went to a, like, a, a computer Shylock and, like, just bought a new MacBook Air. This has changed everything. Everything is good. Everything is beautiful. Morgan thinks the audio is coming off the computer speakers and not where it's supposed to be. Check one. Is that zero? Probably is true. I'm tapping. Oh, for you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Let me turn that down. Check one, two. I so, think it's right now. Okay. Okay. So it's coming? Yes. Okay. But tap... I can take your audio at the end and put well, it Well, tap the on video. the mic. Tap on your mic and see if it... No, look at the indicator and see if it's reacting to it. No, I changed it. So now I know it's right. Okay. I'm not the one who didn't have the audio going. <clears throat> Thank you, Morgan. Well, I did a have it, associate but producer I had of the to, Burn Barrel I had to undo it because I had to undo it because I can't let my computer run out of battery while I'm waiting because I can't have this plugged in at the same time because I can't have the power cord of my computer and the audio plugged in at the same time. And you took so long getting ready oh, that I had wait, to plug so, my so computer back it. in. And I had to I unplug the audio and plug it back in once you were ready to go. Oh, I did it. So I was all ready. Oh, And then I we see. were waiting for you. Because I took so long. What was I taking so long doing, Alice? I don't know. A bunch of stuff you could have done earlier today when you oh, were out really? antiquing. Antiquing. And I've also found, I also was getting our daughter. And I've set up my audio. Okay, but it's my fault. That's fine. That's fine. That's, that's, that's how you need it to be. Incredible how I managed to screw up the video, even though I, the video is not my responsibility. <laughs> Seems to me you could have done that earlier today instead of whatever you were no, doing. No, I set up the audio and I was waiting for you, but then I had to unplug it and plug it back in because I was waiting for you to get ready because you weren't ready at the time when you said you'd be ready. I wasn't? Whereas I had to wasn't manually I ready at upload. Today? I mean, 631? I had to manually upload about 165 old episodes of the podcast to a new podcast feed and get them all set this to is, go. See, my today. computer story is a happy story of positivity. Yours is bitching and moaning. You think Alicia ever does that to Morgan? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. All right. So, she so, is a goddess among women. It's true. A few things I want to get to today. I'm going to take this off, Alice. Hopefully, I wasn't wearing Okay, worried. tell your kids to turn on the heat downstairs. They don't they, know how to do anything. I'm like sure that. they know how to turn it up. I'm sure that's why it's hot in Sally, here. Sally, right do you know now. how to turn the heat down? Or off down? Can you turn the heat off downstairs? Okay. Thank. Oh, she does know. I don't know how to turn it off, but I don't know how to turn it 
just bash it with something. <laughs> um, no, don't really. Um, so, so a few things from the Sunday shows that jumped out at me, and I know, um, and it's 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 very interesting. We'll start with um, Netanyahu was on with Chuck Todd, and it is remarkable. It is remarkable every time, no matter how bad Trump is and gets, mm-hmm. the media sub- somehow- submerges. Equally with him. Yeah, and, it's but, true. It's so funny that you say that because that's exactly what I was going to say next is Trump had these stupid truths on Truth Social mm-hmm. this weekend where he was like, no, that the Elon Musk Twitter file drops have proved that this election was totally fraudulent. We're going to have to suspend the Constitution. Mm-hmm. And then a bunch of MAGA people were like, that's not what he meant. He meant that like the the fraudulent election was already like making the constitution they had some like convolute and then like he doubled down and was like no we have to he was like unprecedented fraud calls for unprecedented measures right like so he like doubled right down and of course in the traditional way trump does when he says something terrible and everyone tries to defend it and then he makes it for doing it for your trouble (laughs) so he was doing that and i was like oh this guy's never gonna get better he's always gonna be the worst version of himself um and then there were the Sunday shows, and the Sunday shows somehow managed to make him look good. Mm-hmm. It, 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 in comparison, because the media feels like since January 6th happened, that one day now, that goes to validate everything they've ever said about him, and they were always right, to, mm-hmm. even though they were pra- they were practicing journalism malpractice that for the last five years they've now decided that they were always right in a good pillar of ethics and wisdom even mm-hmm. though they had lost their minds but the thing is and so so they said january 6th see see we were always right i've always right now to be crying and colbert wearing black every day in his basement for two years and then coming up and crying at people you see all of my behavior is justified but it's not they still have zero credibility he is he, but they are they. So they are no position. They, they assume that they're in a position of judgment. They're not in a position to judge. They're part of the problem. What happened on January 6th, Trump is a big part of that. They are also part of that. Yeah. A- absolutely. Absolutely. And like this this midterm election in the way they're acting that way. Anyway, I'll, let me get, get right to Chuck Todd. He has Benjamin Netanyahu on. Now, Netanyahu obviously is has put a, together a coalition um, in Israel and is going to be the next prime minister, if he's not already. So he that's that's where that is. He's also on a book tour, and, you know, he's just saying hello. So, so um, by the way, if you did you watch um, uh, Face the Nation with Margaret Brennan? I didn't. She was very, very um, concerned with Anthony Blinken that Netanyahu... One of the people in this coalition, because you know, in in the Knesset, you got to put together a coalition of an Israeli politics of all sorts of different interest groups, right? Right, and so well, that's how yeah, that's how parliamentary systems right. kind of work. Yeah. And so, and so, one of the people in his close coalition, mm-hmm. it uh, w- wants to ban gay pride um, parades in Israel. And she demanded that 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 actually this was the the, the Blinken. She said, "What are you going to do about that? What are you going to do?" Is about that it? hilarious when you think about the rest of the Middle East? Yeah, Israel has. Israel has <laughs> like, nukes. They don't kill gay people, right? But, yeah, but like also, everybody but also, else but, around but also, them. So, but also, why are you asking the Secretary of State about Pride policies? I mean, sorry, <laughs> no, Pride policies <laughs> in other countries. Do. We demand I mean, you like, have this kind with, of parade and this kind of parade, with, not like, this kind of parade. We, we don't want to St. Patrick's China. Day. We work with everybody else right. who's like literally enslaving people. Yeah, but also, why, but, like, is, a, why if, is a media small brain asking somebody about parades? Like Blinken, actually, you've got a guy. There's a lot of stuff happening in the world. There's one f- almost, there's one real hot war in Ukraine, which is a proxy war for us. That's a thing. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's still the fallout from Afghanistan, which is also a thing. The Chinese now are um, getting uh, frisky. That's also a thing. Who cares what parades Israel's going to have? Re- really? That's what you care about with Israel? The ones against gay pride parades. Who gives you crap about pride parades or any parades? It's just such as, I mean, it, talk about like a D.C. socialite bubble. You know, that they won't even allow parades there. Yeah. 
And like no, you said, all the neighboring wants the, the neighboring countries all toss gay people off of buildings. It's it, and you were all for the Iran thing, which is and like the World Cup in Qatar, where like the pride flags are banned or whatever, and like right. It's which all... by the way, it, by the way, the I- I- Iranian team, I've heard at least one player is already like missing. There's like those guys. Those guys that's are going to be waxed. Yeah. Um, and yes, and, they, and some. They, but some, that's what some, they're worried some about. Some Iranian rock climber did something protest or two. A woman, and apparently they've bulldozed her house down. The Iranians, they're they're clear class act. Um, so, so anyway, that was what was happening there. And, uh, we, now check Chuck Todd back on, back on um, Meet the Press. He's got Netanyahu, Netanyahu on, but like we said, he's got the Prime Minister of Israel on. He at least didn't go after him about parades. Mm-hmm. But there was a common theme in Chuck Todd's conversation with Bibi Netanyahu. I want to start with this issue of anti-Semitism. And it is rising around the globe and here in the United States. What do you attribute this to? Well, it's the oldest. So first of all, first of all, that is, what do you attribute this to? He's bringing the, 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 the um, issue from the globe over the to the United States, as Netanyahu uh, answers this question, Chuck Todd will be bringing the, the issue southerly down the coast to a destination. <laughs> oh, disease right that's been around uh, as a systemic ideology the for 2,500 years, 500 years before the rise of Christianity, actually. So it's accompanied uh, our history with horrific results uh, over the centuries, uh, and it's not going to go away. What has changed is the birth of Israel that allows the Jewish people as a collective body to uh, fend itself, to defend itself against the periodic uh, uh, flashpoints of uh, violent anti-Semitism. But I think their free societies have to take a consistent position to uh, condemn anti-Semitism, to stand up against it, uh, and to do so. Pretty standard stuff from BB. I want to start with this issue. Okay, sorry, I'm getting used to this player. Pretty standard stuff. But that's not what Todd wants to hear. He's going somewhere else directly on this. Have you said this From directly? Jews and everyone Look, else. You're, you, you've got a unique relationship with former President Trump. Uh, he has consistently flirted with some really fringe characters that spout this anti Semitic behavior. That... By the way, I don't know if he's consistently flirted. With some of these people that tout, spout this anti I mean, actually, specifically, part of the reason why Milo Yiannopoulos and Nick Fuentes set up this trap for Trump with, yay, if you believe the things Milo has been leaking to the media, and is, because, white nas- white supremacy is because he was not anti-Semitic enough and he did too much positive stuff with Israel and, quote, had Kushner whispering in his ear and stuff like that. Like, they're upset that he was too pro-Semitic for them so i mean like i i don't know if like consistently flirted with those figures is the right way to frame it right exactly but because they're mad at him because he was too pro-israel like right. I don't... you said this directly everyone Look, else. you're you you've got a unique relationship with former president trump uh he has consistently flirted with some really fringe characters that spout this anti-semitic behavior that preach white nas- white supremacy and white nationalism, things like that. And he doesn't denounce it. He is yet to denounce Kanye West at all. He's yet to denounce being with a white okay, supremacist one more a few thing. days ago. Uh, Why does- I don't know if Kanye West is the best example of a white nationalist. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. That's a white supremacist. If anything, he's a black supremacist, but I know black nationalist. But I don't know that you should. He's always flirting with those white nationalists, like Kanye West. Like I don't know if that's really the best point you can make here. I, since he, he literally the, worked with Kanye West on doing the criminal justice reform, which yes. was a left wing priority. Right. I, right, where he worked with a, a whole bunch of other black people as well, including Van Jones. Right, and Democrats. Right. It's so, and it was also led by Jared Kush, Kushner as well, that uh, I believe is Jewish. So, but but he, Todd's retort to, to Bibi is so comprehensive that really Bibi should just say, just say what you want to say. Say what you came into the office here today to say. Because you've always go, you got something that you want to 
want to want to get off your chest. You, what do you want to hear me say? Because what he wants is a total declaration from BB that Trump's the worst thing that ever happened to the world. Does he have this di difficulty? And it is. Things. Sorry. Fuck. I mean, sorry. Only one thing play at a time. I don't know. First, let me say that uh, President Trump did great things for Israel. He recognized uh, Jerusalem as our capital, long overdue since King David proclaimed it as such 3,000 years ago. He moved the American embassy there. He recognized our sovereignty in the Golan Heights. He got out of what I believe is the disastrous Iran deal that would have paved Iran's path with gold, hundreds of billions Chuck of dollars of sanctions relief towards a nuclear arsenal. So he's done all these great things, and I appreciate it. And I remain appreciative. On this matter, on Kanye West and that other unacceptable guest, I, I think it's not merely unacceptable, it's just wrong. And I hope he, he sees his way to uh, uh, staying out of it and condemning it. Yeah, Chuck Todd is not pleased with that. Mostly, do you think BB cares if Trump condemns stuff? Because this is what everybody was doing on all the different medias. was yep. like, disavow, disavow, disavow. Yep. Trump hasn't disavowed. He never disavows. He doesn't disavow hard enough. He doesn't disavow people. He doesn't disavow this, that, the other thing. And, like, I, I don't think that matters to anybody what Trump disavows or doesn't disavow. Like, he disavowed white nationalists and neo-Nazis no, all day long. And they, like, made a thing out mm -hmm. of it. It doesn't matter. Of course he's not. After what you guys did when you guys asked him to specifically tell the Proud Boys to step down, and he said, Proud Boys, step down, and they were like, he's giving orders to the Proud Boys yes. now. I mean, like, wh what do you expect him to do? He can never make you guys happy. He's not going to disavow anything to make you happy. And that's what I mean when I say, like, Trump annoyed me with his stupid tweets about suspending the Constitution. Sorry, truths about suspending the Constitution. But, like, then these guys all of a sudden are worse than him. Like, with this stupid rhetoric about... Trump needs to disavow this, that, the other thing. Like, Kanye West is a mentally ill person mm -hmm. who needs help right now. The other people are using him. But, like, why does he have to? Because they, some weirdos dragged in these people to meet up with him. Like, why he has to disavow all this stuff now? Like, it has it has nothing to do with anything. Trump is who he is. Right, right. He has a lot of things, but an anti-Semite is not one of the things that he is. It's just right. not. And everybody Trump has knows to that. Them and Bibi has to disavow Trump. Right, that. because Trump didn't disavow the other thing. Like, And it's this weird chain reaction. Yes. Like, now do we have to disavow Bibi because he didn't disavow Trump who didn't disavow? Like, it's so stupid. And this, like, guilt by association stuff is, it, it's so toxic to the ways that we interact with other people, right? And all it does is it just serves to confirm their priors. Trump became Republican and ran for president. Aha. He's got to be a racist. It, it's on you, Trump, to explain to us how you're not. Well, how come that's only for Republicans? It's only for certain people who have to, to prove they're not racist. And he had no time for it. I had never had time it, it, for any of that But, stuff. like, watching the hysteria, be, I mean, nobody, first of all, nobody would even know that Trump said those things on Truth Social if these idiots in the media didn't amplify them constantly. Mm -hmm. Like, I know, I've never been on Truth Social. I would never look at Trump's Truth Social feed. The only reason I see it is because people keep posting it to disavow it into my feed. Right. You, you want to praise him for what he did for you. It's an ends justifies the means argument. And at what point does his behavior um, end up impacting? I mean, but it's, it's not really an ends justifies the me means argument. No, and... At what point does his behavior? What behavior? What did Trump do? Right. Uh, <laughs> he didn't do anything. He didn't disavow. Is what he did. It's what he didn't do. Behavior is make creating death threats to Jews. Uh, That's taking some liberties, right so there. So because Trump didn't disavow Kanye West, other people yes. started well, this making is where death he gets threats to, to Jewish people. This is where he makes his connection. It's just a beautiful thing to say. And at what point does his behavior? Um, end up impact. I mean, if his behavior is make creating death threats to Jews, um, inspiring people like what happened at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh to shoot and kill uh, Jews. To be honest, Chuck Todd should be fired for that. Yeah. He didn't inspire the Tree of Life guy to kill the Jews. The left decided that Trump's re dangerous rhetoric created an atmosphere that mobilized psychotic anti-Semites into action. They decided that. It's not what happened. 
Right. Guy and in the a... meantime, the actual anti-Semites are constantly pissed at Trump for being too pro-Israel. Yeah, like that guy, as a matter of right. fact, who shot up the place. And this is cr- for him to see. He's now got Trump complicit in the massacre of Jews. Because this is, once again, this is all their priors. It's just the, You need to confirm all my priors. He's the worst guy in the world. He's the worst guy in the world. And he's not. He shouldn't be running for president. He is not. He is not um, uh, worthy of of being president. I'm not even worthy. And, but I, as far as I'm concerned, he's disqualified himself. Absolutely. It, 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 that truth doesn't help either. Uh, but um, but sorry, he's not the antichrist. And I know you need him to be Chuck to explain why you were hyperventilating like a little bitch for four years, and all the people on the left need that. But it, there's nothing to it. Sorry about that. You just couldn't handle him. He's a real estate developer from New York City. It's pretty much all there. That's all you need to know. Um, doesn't that wipe away anything good he did for Israel? <laughs> How do you wipes like that demand? Wipes How do you like away. that? He respected your sovereignty. He put the capital in the right spot mm-hmm. like everyone else was afraid to do, even though they all knew that that was the... Right. actual I mean, reality he did all this stuff for israel facil- the facilitate- abraham accords all the different exactly. things but it just he ate dinner with kanye west so that, who said right. stupid who's a mentally ill person so that just wipes it all away doesn't count and it's justify the means you don't want to you don't want to have peace in the middle east if trump ate dinner with kanye west right. anymore no. you know we take it all back it's <laughs> re- incredible but it also it's good it speaks to like what kind of? I'm going to use a term of theirs. Like incredible privilege you must have. <laughs> I know. No, we. Your country has to be on fire as long as I get to feel better about myself in this country. But that's the same argument that they make to people in the United States about Trump. To be honest, too, and to like Republicans, that's the argument that like the Lincoln Project in these places try and make. The heat is still on, by the way. I can see it blowing your child's Sally, hair right turn now. Turn the heat off. Um. Oh. Okay. Somebody knew how to turn it on. I can tell you that because James A. <laughs> Forget it. It's hot. James. Um, but that's the same argument that they make to Republicans, like that the Lincoln Project tries to make is that like even though Trump did all the conservative justices and gave us the pro life court rulings and gave us the tax cuts and gave us all the things that Republicans have been saying they wanted all their lives, right? Like all these Republican people, we have to be against it now and do everything the Democrats want because Trump says idiotic things and is a, and does crazy things like eat with Kanye West and makes bad choices all the time about what to tweet. And like, so here's the thing about like the Trump dinner with with Kanye. I I can't call him yay. It's just it's too weird. I'm sorry. I like it's like we're gonna call Prince Prince, right? Like we don't call him all the other names or the symbol or whatever. I don't know. He's just Kanye West. Well, Kanye is gonna start demanding we call him Himmler the next week. So I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with just calling him Kanye. Anyway, so. The thing about the Kanye dinner and all his dumb tweets about truths, about whatever, is that to me it proves that like Trump isn't going to change. He hasn't learned anything from the last four years. He's still going to complain about, well, I I guess it's just only two years right now, but he hasn't learned anything. He's still going to hang around with crazy people. He's still going to make terrible personnel decisions he's still going to say lunatic things that make you upset to be defending him like none of that baggage is going away so maybe it's a possibility that trump's going to be the nominee in 2024 and against the democrat i will vote for him anyway because i do like all the other stuff like the tax cuts and the judges Mm -hmm. and the whatever but but you have to accept even if you like trump that None of that bad stuff is going anywhere. He hasn't learned any lessons. You know how to do that. He's man? not going to he's not going to suddenly start acting like a normal president. He's not going to start suddenly right. you know make hiring mm-hmm. terrible people. No, like he's... he hired a lot of the deep state people who are going after him right now. Like right. he specifically and... appointed them. So And he's also getting worse. Yeah, I, yeah, so so that's that's part of the package, right? Mm-hmm. And like, I I think the right wing has to accept that he's just like this now. He's you know, 
that's and puts ketchup on steaks is Morgan. Yeah, he's not going to stop putting ketchup mm. on the steak. If it's a crappy steak. I mean, I could and see probably it. eating McDonald's and all the other things, mm-hmm. and that's fine. I I mean, it is he is what he is, and it's not going to. He's like what eighty now. It's not going to change. He is what at he this is, but he's not. He is not what he is not. So in, in other words. He didn't steal nuclear secrets and bring them to Marla. Right. You know? He's not actually a Russian asset. Right, right like, exactly. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of left-wing fantasy stuff that is not true about him, right? But we're going to get all the same craziness. And, like, frankly, I think the American people are pretty sick of that other stuff. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think he'd be a poor choice for nominee. I know Look, that we're gonna get to that people the, when the I say election, that. We're going to get to that later because I have a new take. But um, since we're kind of on the um, the topic of Trump being upset about the Twitter files leaks, do you want to well, like, talk con- about I that? Well, I want to finish off wanna... the tr- okay. BB stuff. We're going to finish BB. Um, doesn't that wipe away anything good he did for Israel? <laughs> if, it, if it's systemic and continues, and I doubt that it will because I think he probably understands that it crosses a line. But uh, if you ask me what is driving the rise of anti-Semitism in France or in uh, uh, in Britain and elsewhere where it's clearly not uh, mm-hmm. not this or that personality, then I would say that probably what is driving it is the uh, the uh, one of the unfortunate uh, effects of the Internet age. Uh, there are many, many blessings of the Internet age, but it comes also with a curse. And the curse is uh, polarization. In the case of anti-Semitism, it's the, mm-hmm. the melding, the fusion of the uh, anti-Semitism from the extreme radical right. uh, left with the extreme radical right. It fuses into Jew hatred, you know. The communists blame the Jews for being capitalists. The capitalists right. blame the Jews for being communists. You have a problem, blame the Jews. So, once again, Chuck Todd did not have BBN to take the heat away from Trump. No, 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 no. He's demanding his pound of flesh here. You've been more critical of some congressional Democrats... Uh, who are critical of the Israeli government than you are of a Donald Trump. You've been more critical of some congressional Democrats uh, who are critical of the Israeli government than you are of a Donald Trump uh, who's been elevating people who praise Hitler. Is that go to this sort of transactional nature if it's, you know, but they're helping nature. Israel? I mean, and if you they're helping Israel, case, that's what's got to come first? You can make a case, by the way, that telling... Netanyahu that he's making decisions in on a transactional basis is actually more anti-Semitic than anything Trump's ever said. I think Chuck Todd is Jewish, so I think he's got an out. But yes, you could. And I mean, if things saying were like, "Oh, well, the Jewish state is so transactional." Like, I mean, that's a little questionable. I wouldn't go out there. How about the Benjamins that. with it, with you, Mister ben- Benjamin? <laughs> isn't it? Sorry, Chuck, I just uh, nullified that argument in, on this very program and on previous programs when I came out very strongly against that meeting with that, uh, uh, with that, and those anti-Semitic grantings, which uh, in the case of uh, at least one of the participants seemed to be something that is, uh, how shall I say this? Uh, Sorry. I'm getting, I'm just learning He's this. He's getting used thing. to his new Plus, it's got right. a quick hair trigger. Related to personalities, more than probably more than views, but yeah. they're bad enough either way. You don't exculpate them. Whoever says it for whatever reason right. is wrong. You don't praise Hitler. You don't praise How can you praise Hitler? I, Hitler was the greatest mass killer of all time. So anybody who praises him is wrong. Anybody who meets with him and gives the legitimacy is wrong. And I, I've said it as much, and I'll continue to say it. And you know, and one more point. Is it where BB's from? He has real anti-Semitism to deal with. Yeah, like and people trying to blow people, him up. Because yes, and he's blowing Jewish. citizens up in in women and children in in pizza mm-hmm. shops and in the streets and like vicious, real anti-Semitic stuff. He doesn't. He's not really phased or like interest all that interested in By, like, some Trump incel loser and some rap right. artist who sells o- o- over expensive shoes and has lost his mind. You know, because they had a dinner with a friend who's the former president. It's like it's so funny. But the American media, this is about them. This is about them working through their emotions. So which brings me to Margaret Brennan. And we kind of touched on this as well. Okay, let's see if I can find this. 
Um, she's with Face the Nation, as you know. And she's got the um, new Intel honcho, um, Rep Mike Turner of Ohio. So he's going to be the big Intel guy. And now she is very upset, very upset about the Mar-a-Lago raid. Mm -hmm. And she's going to frame this in a way that hopefully he can understand. Because it not only did Kanye and Nick Fuentes go to Mar-a-Lago, but that's where the stolen documents are. Are you getting the situation here? Mm-hmm. She's very concerned about this. Well, I mean, you know, I, 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 first of all, I vehemently disagree with uh, with the statement that that Trump has made. Trump has made, you know, a thousand statements in which I, I disagree. Uh, there is a political process that has to go forward uh, before anybody is a, before, conservatives before anybody, are pretty clear about be, where they value be, the Constitution. Right, exactly. But is be, there any there scenario has with to be, suspending the Constitution? See, I, you do get to pick the questions, but I do get to pick my answer. I know. Um, I'm trying to get you to answer question. the question I'm asking. There exactly. is a political process that has to go forward before anybody's a front runner or anybody is a um, even uh, the candidate uh, for the party. And Do you I condemn think him that, saying and something I believe, like this? Absolutely. And I believe, answering your question, uh, that people certainly are going to take into consideration a statement like this as they evaluate a candidate. Mm-hmm. I also have to ask you about the other statement um, and the people that he has been spending time with. Um, a neo-Nazi pro-Putin misogynist named Nick Fuentes came to have dinner with the former president at his home alongside Kanye West, who just this past... Isn't it interesting? He's pro-Putin. You're not allowed to be pro-Putin. You have to be yeah. pro-Ukraine. I did see one funny tweet today that was like, Hitler would be so mad to know that, you know, however many, like 80 years later, his biggest fans are... Uh, a Hispanic virgin and a black rapper. Yeah. Like, but by the way, he's a neo-Nazi, that. pro-Putin um, misogynist. Like, if he's a neo-Nazi, who cares if he's a misogynist? <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, they're just throwing... But to well, them, it's all one issue. Right. They probably are like, and he's a climate change denier. Yes, oh, totally. <laughs> I mean, like, it's denier. all the same thing. Praised Hitler. So this is atrocious. I mean, this is- Why is this rep, Turner in trouble because Kanye West praised Hitler. Isn't it interesting how Republicans all have to own this? Mm-hmm. Well, Kanye West, do you hear her throw the paper down? Here, listen to the paper again. He's been spending time with um, a neo-Nazi pro-Putin misogynist named Nick Fuentes came to have dinner with the former president at his home listen alongside Kanye West, who just this past week praised Hitler. This Mike is atrocious. Drop. I mean, this is true. Everybody, I think, everyone. You need to answer for Nick Fuentes and Kanye West. <laughs> this guy, this this guy's out of California. But or isn't something. it just like so? And this is why I hate this. Like, you must denounce this culture. Is it's because like it's the politicization of everything. Like, no one has time in the day to denounce all the things that you're supposed to denounce. Just like you have. I mean, there's not enough time to condemn all this stuff, right? And, like, everybody uses this as this gotcha on Twitter. When anybody says anything, they're like, whoa, where are your tweets talking about yes, X, Y, yes. Z? Like, like every single 35-second news item that's in the news cycle for that long before our, like, ADD news cycle is on to the next thing, I have to, like, weigh in and state for or against each one. Like, I have to... Yes. Like, you know what? I probably have not tweeted about the Tree of Life synagogue that is, either. You know I probably, there's probably, like, a ton of things I haven't tweeted about. Just maybe I wasn't yeah. on Twitter that day. I don't know. Like, but... But, like, this, that's where this leads you is, like, you have to get everybody to weigh in. Are you for synagogue shootings yes, or against them? Exactly. You must and, announce. And it's a weird like, Twitter a kindergarten playground thing. Where are the tweets when you said this? I didn't see you tweet when they did it. <laughs> it's, like, right there when somebody's, like, mad at me for something and they go, they'll, they'll have a picture of my avatar that they, and they'll go, like, this you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm so ridiculous looking and presenting that I'm instantly nuked by the fact that he's exposed to my visage. This you, bro? Yeah. It's like, Jesus. It both condemns and is shocked and better. is as, as disgusted and nauseated by the fact that we're like even in up. this year, you know, in 2022, having anyone that would make statements oh uh, like that, nevertheless, have anybody who would engage in a conversation with someone who is having st- making statements like that. So having Absolutely. classified documents at the same place where they're having the dinner which were not well, that's, that's necessary. Not. Well, they're not there anymore. Uh, the fact <laughs> that she doesn't know this. No, she's ruminating live 
and she's now aha, she's now broken in the yeah. story. She's the got the FBI scoop. FBI took them. No, he this, explains that to right? her. But no, she's on to something. She's <laughs> Morgan something. says he thinks Nick might have the nuclear codes in his blue sweatshirt. Yeah. Sarahly securely held, and their government records that should be in government property. All those things together, the problem. Well, as you know, the FBI raided his home. And suppose there are not classified documents there. But I- as you know, he says uh, charitably, because she doesn't know, and she didn't know, and she thought she had something great. <laughs> ha ha. All of these are issues of judgment. The premise and of saying you- he doesn't know who he's having dinner <clears throat> with at that home. These are all issues. Which now she's just purely lost. She thought she had an open net there. Of judgment. And a political process has to go forward. And I believe voters are smart. And they'll take those things into consideration in a political process. Congressman, thank you for... If if Trump had a sense of humor, and he does sometimes... Not about... He would hand Kanye one confidential document. <laughs> <laughs> just about nukes. That's it. All right. Uh, so the the last p- piece of stuff I want to get to on the Sunday shows is Catherine Clark, Melrose's own Catherine Clark. Yeah, it used to be on the school committee. In case you are wondering, I had a great conversation. If you like like local politics stuff, I had an awesome conversation with John Featherston on the fifteen seventy oh, project. Great. That if you great. if you like that kind of stuff, like nuts and bolts party mm-hmm. organizing kind of stuff, you should definitely give that a listen. There were two I've- people. Questioning John Featherston <laughs> in that particular <laughs> podcast. It was a great podcast, but Featherston has a very interesting style where he'll ask himself questions. <laughs> do I uh, throw fireballs like Kirk Minahan? No. But do I get upset at things sometimes as well? Yes, I also am a human being. So he's not afraid to ask questions. Both Alice and John <laughs> conducted a great interview of John. I love John. It was a great interview. I'm just, I'm just, no, I just, just my. I I'm just always going to love John Featherston because during my 2016 run for state committee, which was one of the most miserable time periods of my entire life and probably our family's life. Would you not agree with that? Was that not kind one of, of terrible? Uh, John Featherston was one of, uh, he might be the only person outside my actual district who didn't personally know me who w- was not horrifically behaved towards me that entire time. So <laughs> he was actually nice to me. Well, so he's I'm a, always why would he, gonna, he's a Republican. Why wouldn't he be nice to you? Because it was a Republican state, state committee race. So oh, it was Republican right. versus Republican. Oh, right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, br- it was in the state committee like has sides to it, which I didn't yeah. really know before I got into it because I was kind of naive. I was like, I'm a Republican and I want to volunteer to do this to be helpful. And then like i had people attacking me for like made up stuff like uh, crazy things anyway so but john featherston was like the only person who was nice to me at that time (laughs) so i'm always gonna love him for that no matter what i remember they they ran somebody against you who beat you um this is that right Uh uh-huh in the primary Remember they ran somebody against you? It's not in the primary. Or whatever it was. It was. Oh, but the, yeah, yeah. It, that's the race. It's right. for it a the, Republican thing. It was the thing. candidate from Stoneham, right? Yes. And I remember that that candidate then came in with a handler, a mm-hmm. Republican consultant, and the consultant saying to me, Tom, it's not personal. And I thought, it's interesting. Interesting words. Mm-hmm. You know what? It wasn't personal until you just said that. There right. will be a time, Alice. There will be a time. When I have the opportunity to um, avail myself to the uh, uh, disruption of that person, and I'll just have that singing in my ears. It's not personal. Sorry about that. It's always... Well, to those particular people, it's probably not. It's probably about getting paid cash money, which it is. Well, sure. Because that's what they do. And there's other people that yeah. do that, like certain radio hosts, that it's only about money to Whoa. them. But... I don't know who you're talking about. So... I distance myself from that. <laughs> I know, because you're scared. But <laughs> I'm a fan of those people, Alice. I know. Hell. I'm on but... his side when it comes to yeah, the Morgan's Speaking show. of people, you know, John Featherston was also a radio host at that time. So when I say that he's the only person who is nice to me, there's other radio hosts who are not nice how to me. How he toured into Alice. But you held your own on the phone. The problem so, is anyway. they her down well but the problem good. is how i was being paid by the no, quote other side which is that, in that time yes he was yes he was paid he robocalled for my opponent in my district really? and everybody else all the same people that he's now 
dissing for being on the state committee and complaining that they're the Jim Lyons crowd and they're losers and whatever. Uh-huh. He did. He was paid for it and did robocalls for all those people at that time. Okay. But by the way, those that group of just... people doesn't have money anymore, so he's not their friend anymore because that's how I that just works. I myself from everything okay. you say. I am on Team Howie. Um, I, I will have you know that also involved in that in that phone call was one producer named Steve Robinson. Mm-hmm. 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 I remember after the phone call was over, he was like, Steve said, that's, that's not the Shattuck that we know. No, they were confused. That's why they took my call because right. they didn't, well, whatever. Okay. That's so a long listen, story. Uh, listen, it is time to go to the chat chat. Already? But we didn't even get to Catherine Clark. Uh, or the Twitter files. Well, we Or have I have that. some other well, small we'll stories. We'll do the Patreon. We'll do Catherine Clark. How about that? Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to message discipline that we're on a new anyway, ho- hosting. I was post, going to a whole thing about this oh. anyway because. Go to uh, your whole thing. Go ahead. Okay, so this whole thing got started, but then we got sucked into this conversation, um, about the whole thing because I was talking about Catherine Clark, and so if you're wondering why it's important that you have normal good people winning your school committee races the answer is that then you end up with a Catherine clark who's now the most powerful woman in the whole country she's the second in command of the house democrats and like she's not she's a great. minority whip she's not good she's no i mean she's yeah uh, it is interesting that the new leadership is all from super blue states she's one of the three thousand different progressive activists from melrose we know that suddenly developed a non-binary child in the last few years alice by the way jesus you no wonder why you have no friends like, yeah no kidding i know fires everywhere here's Catherine <laughs> clark to today I, I remember my middle child waking up with by the way you know i hadn't known that what you just said but that so relates to this so perfectly. I know it does. I That's remember why I said it. my middle child waking up with nightmares over concern around climate change. Mm-hmm. I've had my family at a movie theater when, when the movie stopped, my children immediately felt there must be a shooter in the theater with us. It usually is. <laughs> I mean, that's what I always think in a movie theater. <laughs> is that the first thing the shooter does? Is go up and stop the movie? <laughs> By the way, it's... usually don't you hear gunshots? Isn't that part of having a shooter in the well, movie theater? Well, yeah. I don't. What is? <laughs> Does it... the the movie theater shooting of which there is one famous one that we know of? Um, if you don't include the uh, Oswald or whatever, the movie theater shooting, the movie didn't stop. We're gonna pause here for a moment in case anybody has it in AK forty seven. It's like they didn't stop the movie for the shooter. That's the whole thing. Yeah. They were watching Batman. Well, it doesn't matter. But, but, I mean, like, have these people, have any of them been around gunshots? Because gunshots, particularly ones from, quote, assault weapons, like these AR-15 rifles and stuff, gunshots are really loud. Like, there's a reason why people wear air protection when they shoot. But, like, you would know if there's a shooter shooting people in your movie theater. It's, like, pretty tough to miss. Well, sure, but mostly, always, there's never a shooter in the movie theater. <laughs> that, too. That, too. You mostly can just assume there's not one, but especially if you can't hear gunshots, there's definitely not a shooter in the movie theater also. Right. Because right. you'd be able and, to and hear that. The scenario is not that it stops. <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. But the point is, of course, is that, obviously, this is a psychotic who has, if she's telling the truth, who knows? But if she is, this is a psychotic who has so unnerved her children with her insanity that they're having trouble with the movie. First of all, when the movie stops, when is the movie stopping? That's one thing. But also, they're waking up nightmares of climate change. Yeah, I know. <laughs> really? That's a man, that is a man made <laughs> dilemma. Dimension. That's the a te- sign of. Yes. Really insane parenting techniques. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, okay, you honey, the water's going to recede and you're all going to suffocate. And you, honey, I know parents, the movie's going to stop and you're going to get shot. Good I know kids. parents Mwah. who say stuff like that. I'm like, it's going to be hard to breathe pretty soon. <laughs> I know it's not. What Jesus. are you talking about? God, you psychos. Oh. <laughs> I, I remember my middle but yeah, child but yeah, if waking you tell up your with nightmares. Stuff like that all the I time. remember. They might wake up with nightmares about the insane, crazy fear mongering you yeah. do to your child. To your child, you're telling them this stuff. Like, I, yeah. okay, my my do not have that problem. <laughs> they, they don't they don't give a bleep. Um, okay, 
So, uh, chat chat? Yes, let's jump to the chat chat. Oh, what do you mean, chat chat? Oh, sorry. There's no sorry. Chat, chat. There's no chat chat anymore. It's the Chelsea Fire Wicked Hotline. Oh, I can't get to it. Can you get to it? What do you mean? To my copy points. I got to oh. read this. Yeah. Okay. Get I, to I, your tried copy to, I tried to print them out, but they, you're, you're the printing printer them. is out of an ink I must color. Have, I must I have, have done to... that. I must have done that. Sorry about that. <laughs> I did that. Yeah. Apologize, apologize for that. Uh-huh. Hold on. Okay. Uh, can get to your copy points. You get the last remaining printer in modern America, and it's out of. <laughs> it's out of an ink color. I know. Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce, um, by the way, I've already gotten good feedback because. So has anyone tried it yet? So this is the deal with this. Uh, yeah, yeah. It got, it, a guy went to get it today. Um, one of our listeners got it today because I told them about filling up the avocado with, with it. And it's delicious. I did the same thing today. Filled up the avocado, another avocado, my last out of avocado of the week, unfortunately, um, with it. And it is, it's absolutely delicious. It's such a clean taste and a great burn. And they are, um, uh, what's the other thing? Oh, yeah. I find myself now eating eggs more which is extremely healthy a lot of people call eggs superfood because mm-hmm. i get to use the hot sauce so yeah. today i didn't it's I'm, one of the most ancient human foods you know because humans ate eggs before we domesticated birds that laid eggs because we would grab wild eggs and eat them yeah. so like humans are evolved to eat eggs for thousands and thousands of years like since before we were domesticating animals just thank saying you. thank you very much alice i appreciate it a Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce, a wickedly flavorful blend of habanero and ghost peppers. It's so clean. It's perfect. Uh, let's see. Sea salt is used for reduced sodium. Sea salt is what we use as well. Mm-hmm. On That's my... what we're told to mm-hmm. use. You can get them at. There's no preservatives in this. It's no. There's no xanthan gum in it, which is why you got to shake it. Whole Foods in Mass, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Florida. I was actually in. Uh, it was. I was actually in, in Shaw's today. They did not have it, so I walked right out. That's another went, strike against Shaw's yep. over Market Basket. Market wow. Basket, Big Y in Mass, in Connecticut. Um, Stop and Shop, Local Rack in Mass. Uh, Walmart Marketplace, Amazon Choice. You can get it. They are created and incorporated in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Manufactured in St. Augustine, Florida, home state of the next president, Ronald J. DeSantis. Mm, St. Augustine is on my list of like, it's like my must Ooh. visit. 5% list. of all sales proceeds go to the National Fallen Firefighters uh, Foundation, helping families and coworkers of, of fallen firefighters. It's Chelsea Fire Hot Sauce. The Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce. Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce. It is the gold standard for hot sauce. And our partners here, the official partners of the Burn Barrel podcast, and my good friends. It's also bleep and delicious, and I can't believe I'm doing it right when I'm doing Awaken 180, and the two things work so well together. All right, time for the chat chat. You ready, homie? We are ready. All right. Hey, hi, Tom. Hi, Alice. Hey, Phil. Just wanted to give you a heads up. I forwarded you a an article, an opinion piece from our local newspaper, the Attleboro Sun Chronicle, moments ago. And uh, it looks like there's uh, going to be some movement uh, up at the state house on a bill to prohibit any kind of uh, high school team mascot nickname that may be related, it sounds like any way possible, with uh, Native Americans. <laughs> so... Uh, According to the opinion writer here, you know, the wokesters uh, have awoken and uh, they need something mm-hmm. new to latch on to, to uh, complain about and to uh, waste time over. So uh, give it a peek and let me know what you think. We will take a All look. Right. I pulled that have up. Thanks, Phil. I also I was yeah. searching for Phil in our email and he just sent a picture. Uh, from yesterday as well that he made purchase of a Chelsea Fire Wicked hot sauce hey! for his birthday yesterday. That so is fantastic. Hope you like Forward that. that to me, will you? And we will um we will take a look at this article about the school mascot. Well, that is that you know so favorite? in Connecticut they tie money to it. You can't mm-hmm. get any casino money if you've got a Native American nickname. I mean it's stupid because it honors Native Americans, but these 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 are people um, with idle hands in in um, well-to-do towns who are making these choices they these are the kind of people who will never ever watch a, fi- a thanksgiving football game probably think it's gross but they want to make you uncomfortable that's their goal is to make you um a little bit disturbed and so these people are are, are a-holes it's anti-intellectual it's just another progressive move it's hey disgusting. if the shattuck's can be over having indian mascots 
then the Indians can be over it too, don't you think? Like if the Shattuck's can move past you mean our past considering beef, all the massacres our, they yes, did of my our people? past beef with Correct. Native Americans Correct. and have Native American mascots, then the Native Americans can also move past it. That's my opinion. Correct. Hey guys, Mike and Groveland here. Hey Mike. Just wanted to comment on the It's all over Groveland today. All over Groveland today, including at uh, Is our that favorite, where you got that table? My favorite packy, Jerry's. No, the table was from What was that table from? I guess that Tom was out antiquing today. Uh, that was Facebook Marketplace. That's a great table, isn't it? What, what town is it from? It's pretty cool. I got rid of two side tables to bring one in. It is from... Where the hell was I? I was... Jeez, this is this is not good. <laughs> it was really a nice... Oh, it was that, that was um, Salem, New Hampshire. In a really ritzy section of Salem, New Hampshire. I didn't know there was one. Connecticut mom you had on. Yes. It wasn't that... Megan. Megan, yes. She was awesome. Yes, really great, great feedback from a lot of people about that. Wanted to comment on the Connecticut mom you had on. It wasn't that long ago the gay community was just preaching tolerance. They just wanted people to be tolerant of their lifestyle, which I think most of us are. Uh, somewhere along the lines that changed, and now it's a celebration. You have to celebrate it, and if you don't, you're the enemy. Um, and that put us on this slippery slope to where where we are now with our schools uh, force feeding. Um, gender issues on seven and eight year olds. Uh, let's just let seven and eight year olds be seven and eight. You would <laughs> Not think, right? Worry about you know gender. Um, and it's heartbreak. It was heartbreaking to hear the hurt in that mom's voice, and also it's disappointing that more parents um, aren't standing up with her. But you really got to keep an eye on what's going on in the public schools now. Uh, our own uh, local school system here had a. Um, had a pedophile arrested for you know, right. possession, uh, substitute teacher. He was uh, charged with child porn. And it's, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's the, oh, that's the one. one we, that's in our school read. district, yes. Oh, is that in Pentucket? That's, yes, that's the Merrimack one that we talked about. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Yes, well, and there. by the way, I talked about at that time what a huge red flag it is to me to have the teacher who's a young man being friends with kids on social media and um one of our kids recently let me know that the um like the helper teacher who floats between their classes at their school a bunch of her friends are have found his social media accounts and like friended him on there and I'm like, wouldn't you, after this happens in your school district as a teacher, just like lock down everything and make sure that you are absolutely not findable? This was on TikTok. Like, wouldn't you make sure that you're not findable by your sixth grade students on TikTok? Alex, like, I just think not using edge, your name. I think like, the cutting edge of the movement is to be like connecting with your students on TikTok. Is trying to, I mean, I'm talking like philosophically, the cutting edge of the progressive movement is trying to soften up the turf. There should not, there should be enough boundaries between you as a teacher and the kids. Your cousin told you this too, that their school gave extra credit points if you followed the teacher on Instagram. Remember this? That's right. That's right. And at their school district, which is in a, supposedly a much more normal state than ours, but like there needs to be a boundary between the teachers and the students because this one that Mike's referring to who was in our school district, our shared school district with Mike, that... Um, that was part of the issue is he he was this is how the parents found out that this was happening and sent the police to check his phone on which there were a ton of pictures of kids little naked legs and naked pictures of the kids he babysits on his phone um th that it came up because parents were concerned about his behavior with their kids on social media if you are a teacher and you work with children make sure that the children cannot find your social media accounts i'm sorry that's just the bare minimum oh, well, like, course, but if the problem is i mean look at lives of tiktok it's filled with teachers yeah they're get your freaking just you can't be yeah. findable if you're a teacher well, you can't because you cannot be mixing whether you're straight gay or whatever like i don't even care what you are do not mix your personal life with your children's personal lives i didn't know anything about my teacher's personal lives when i was a kid did you no did you know who they were sleeping with or what they were doing or how old their kids were or anything? Like, I had no idea and I was not interested in knowing. And any time, because kids are self-absorbed at that age, like, I'm sorry, they just are. And, like, 
anytime you as a teacher are bringing in your personal life, it's about your validation and needs and stuff. Like, Of course it is. My there God. was another teacher in our school district who was obsessed with telling the kids about how she was getting her doctorate and like made them all call her doctor too and like be proud of her for getting that's, her that's doctorate. Worse. I, I, I hate her more than a pedophile. <laughs> I know, but uh, it's in the same category to me of needing an adult needing validation from children. Right? For, like, you know, possession uh, substitute teacher. He was uh, charged with child porn. And right. it's, you know, you, what you could read about the uh, case before it got memory hold, um, it, he sounded like a classic groomer. Um, but anyways, we're not allowed uh, to say that. We are today. <laughs> Enjoy. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Look forward to it. Yeah, we're not allowed to. That hurts feelings if we call people groomers, remember? Mm-hmm. Ho, ho, ho. Hello, Burn Barrel. Hey. It appears Hi, that everybody's on the good list. Yeah. I'll accept Justin the Hoosier. <laughs> Very naughty. He's getting coal. Well, hope everybody is having a wonderful time. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, it's nice to hear from Santa Claus. Hey, Santa just called, Anson. He noticed that you vacuumed the family room. That's good. Okay. Hi, babies. It's Les. Hi, Leslie. Hey. I think you know why I'm calling. America's darling Vladimir Zelensky took a break from his extortion grift money laundering gig to ban the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Is that true? He banned. Well, it's a little complicated because there's. Part of what happened in the lead up to this whole breakdown of relations between Russia and Ukraine in the years leading up to this is there was a there is a schism in the Ukrainian Orthodox Church because the Ukrainian Orthodox Church has traditionally been part of the Russian Orthodox mm-hmm. Church. And um, the it nobody cares about this, but but basically there's two Ukraine Ukrainian Orthodox churches, one of which is associated with the um, ecumenical patriarch and one of which is associated with the the russian patriarch um and the the one that's associated with the russian patriarch is considered pro-russian the other one about 80 percent of ukrainians are in and that's associated with the ecumenical patriarch they kind of aren't in communion with each other but there's a bunch of people in communion with both too so it's like not really quite a full schism of the orthodox church but so so the one he went after is the russian one Right. right. So about 20% of Ukrainians are in that. It's not against like all Orthodox Christians in general. I understand. Yeah. Go ahead, Leslie. Sorry. Just um, providing my- some context for the people who don't follow this stuff like you and I do, Leslie. Sorry, go ahead. My understanding is that this comes after his already jailing uh, political enemies and banning certain media outlets and banning political parties in general. And the article that I didn't have the heart to read yet indicates that he may have put the hierarchs, the Orthodox hierarch bishops in Ukraine into, you know, a camp for their own protection. Needless to say, I'm out of my mind about this. I have a feeling one of you is also out of your mind about this. And really the only thing I have to say at this point is, you know who would never have the balls or be so stupid as to ban the Orthodox Church in their country? Putin. Love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about Putin. I I mean, because he's a former KGB, which doesn't exactly have the best relations with the Orthodox Church. I think Putin uses the Orthodox Church where he can. Um, and I think... Like I say, the the Orthodox Church that Zelensky has gone after is not the one that 80 percent of the Ukrainian people are in and not the one. I mean, they are in that's not like some illegitimate branch of the Orthodox Church. That's also they're both in communion with different parts of the Orthodox Church. So it's a little bit of a complicated situation. I will agree. He's definitely uh, persecuting that uh, Russian branch. I don't know. Like there's a lot of stories about to what extent, but I, I don't know. It's hard to it's. Hard hey, know. guys, Mike and Grove one again. Hey, Mike. Um, hey, Mike. I forgot on my previous call. I was the individual who photoshopped Tom into a St. Pauli girl. Nice job. So I appreciate you having a sense Good of humor work. about that. Nice job. And not only are we tolerant, we're, we're also celebrating. Talk to you later. <laughs> we are celebrating. Thank you. I actually still found that attractive. Uh, let's see. All right. 
Oh, so we uh, we record a podcast uh, five days a week. So at least you guys could do is uh, record a fuck off. You know, we have jobs and, and shit and uh, fuck off. And that's about you saying I know that's about you saying that you should leave call more... in and leave more chat chat messages. But you did. So it worked. So there you go. Wow. Uh, full of P and V. <laughs> we record a podcast uh, five days. That's a- you. I know that's, that's a, my that's voice. That's your. That's your. Dead, I am. I stand with Danny. Absolutely from dead on. I stand with Danny. Dead from on. Bilirica. Absolutely. Who do you think you are, lady? Week. So at least you guys could do is uh, record a fuck off. <laughs> you know we have jobs and, and shit. So do I. And uh, fuck off. And uh, Chelsea Hot Fire Sauce. Uh, please send me a case. Thanks. <laughs> you know, for that, Danny, there is uh, at least a bottle of. Uh, Chelsea Fire Wicked Hot Sauce coming your way. Do you apologize? The least you people could do <laughs> is leave some messages. I, I don't like... apologize. Then Danny called me. See? That's how you have to talk to people. So. I guess so. <laughs> we at the burn barrel. We at the burn What? Is that yay? We at the burn We at the burn we have the burn bear. We have the burn bear. That's a DA. We have the burn bear. 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 We have when I went to monetize our podcast on ACAST, I checked a box that said we don't, we don't endorse uh, any illegal drugs. Just kicking it in the studio. Releasing some steam. Anyway, I'd like to get into that Chelsea Fire studio. I'm running out of places to be. Love you guys. Thank you. It's yay, dude. That's huge. Huge. And no props to Hitler in our are you going to condemn him? No, I'm not condemning him. <laughs> now I take back my condemnation of Ye and uh, Hitler. Alice, these microphones don't just happen. <laughs> Highways don't just happen. I read in the debunking of that that actually a Jewish person, a German Jewish person invented the microphone being referenced by Kanye. But oh, right. excellent, guys. Excellent representation on the chat chat. Good sorry, work the on the Chelsea chat chat. Fire the Chelsea Wicked. Fire Wicked Hotline chat chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where's um, my thing to, to go away? I know, but we're not going all the way away because if you're on Patreon, stay there because Sorry. we're going to do the Patreon show next um, because we owe you guys that for sure. Um, and I don't know what else I was going to say about that, but you can always... The do- least you could do. I know. Take time I, out of good your job. work week. Good job on the chat chat, guys. Good improvement. See, I gave a I'm little motivation. <laughs> like, sure. Elitist bitch, babe. <laughs> my goodness. And I then- didn't say the word, uh, Leslie, yet. Um, anyway, patreon.com slash burn barrel, burn barrel podcast.com. <laughs>